Hi ladies, this video is going to run through a few um, stoichiometry examples and these examples are taken from past AP exams. So these are examples um, that are similar to those that you will see in AP classroom or on um, potentially the AP exam. So I just wanted to run through some of these and hopefully this will be a nice refresher for stoichiometry and also kind of give you some practice with reading more into a problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example. So um, I'm going to get out my highlighter just so we can highlight some pertinent information. So solid lithium hydroxide okay, is used in space vehicles to remove exhaled carbon dioxide. So that's interesting. <laughs> From the living environment by forming, right? So forming should be your clue that we're now going to move into our reactants, or not reactants, sorry, products, forming products. Um, solid lithium carbonate and liquid water. Okay, so we even are given um, our states of matter in this problem. Okay, what mass of gaseous carbon dioxide can be absorbed by one kilogram of lithium hydroxide. So we're given a starting amount of lithium hydroxide and we're saying that if we had this much of this reactant, right, how much of this reactant can be used up? So this is a pretty basic um, gram to gram, um, three step stoichiometric calculation. All right, but the first thing that we're gonna need to do here in order to do this is write out our equation so we have an idea of what our mole ratios are. All right, so lithium hydroxide. So lithium, right, is a plus one, so Li, and OH is a minus one. So pretty easy formula there. Carbon dioxide, right, CO2, everybody should know that. What state of matter is carbon dioxide? Well, if you're breathing it out, it can't be a solid or a liquid, right? That would be a little weird. So it's a gas. Okay, so LiOH plus CO2, right? And then we're producing solid lithium carbonate. So carbonate, if you remember, is CO3 minus two. Lithium's a plus one. So I'm gonna need two lithiums to balance out my um, carbonate. So LiCO3 and we're told in the problem that that's a solid, and liquid water. So H2O, liquid. All right, so Coolio, now we just have to balance this guy. All right, this one could be a little tricky, but if you think back to, are we gonna be able to do that HOH? We should be able to. So if we want to think of this guy as HOH, so we have a hydroxide on this side, hydroxide on this side. Um, we actually, we can't do that because there's not a separate H anywhere. So scratch that idea. Um, all right, so let's start with uh, lithium. Okay, so we have two lithiums. Let's put a two here and see what that gets us. So that gives us two Li's. So L-I-O-H-C, L-I-O-H-C. And let's tally these up. This will make this a little easier. So we have two, 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 uh, one C, and actually, um, we have two O's here, two O's here, so that gives us four there. Okay, on this side now we have two lithiums. We have three plus one, that's four oxygens, two hydrogens, one C. Well, that's pretty convenient. So that balances it, just one coefficient in front of the lithium hydroxide. All right, so now we um, can appropriate appropriately, excuse my lack of enunciation, um, now we can appropriately, appro 
appropriately write our mole ratios. So we have a starting amount of one kilogram of lithium hydroxide. So what do we want to do with that? We probably want to go ahead and convert that to grams. So one kilogram is simply, slide that over three spots, 1,000, going to need our um, decimal point there. So 1,000 grams. So 1,000 grams. And actually, this is three sig figs. So we're going to want to put our answer in three sig figs. That starting amount is three. And when I put the decimal point there, that actually gives us four. So 1,000 grams of LiOH. OK. So the first thing that we're going to need is we are going to need to calculate the molar mass of lithium hydroxide. So I have 6.9 plus 16 for oxygen plus 1 for hydrogen. And that's not too bad. That's 23.9 grams per mole. LiOH. All right. Next thing we want is we want a mole ratio. So there we want carbon dioxide on top, since that's what we're trying to calculate. And then two moles LiOH on the bottom. OK, and then we just need our molar mass of carbon dioxide. So I have 12 plus 2 times 16, and that is 44 grams per mole of CO2. All right, let's cancel some units. Grams of LiOH, moles LiOH, moles CO2. OK, let's do some math. So I'm going to multiply together everything on the top. So 1,000 times 44. And then I'm going to divide by in parentheses, 23.9 times 2. And I get 920.50 grams of CO2. And again, remember, we knew we were going to need three sig figs. So I'm going to go ahead and round that to three. So I'm going to use the five and round that to 921 grams of CO2. All right. So that's all you have to do for that problem. That was pretty simple. All right, let's take a look at this next problem. So baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, is used as an antacid. It neutralizes excess hydrochloric acid secreted by the stomach. So this is a true story. This is um, uh, an actual... Uh, what am I trying to say? Um, reaction that is used for people that have, um, it's called, uh, why can't I think of what it's Heartburn. Oh my gosh. Okay. So sodium bicarbonate plus hydrochloric acid. So that is actually stomach acid and that neutralizes into sodium chloride, H2O and CO2. So where does that H2O come from when you have the H and it bonds to that bicarbonate um, ion, what you get is you get H2CO3. And anytime you see H2CO3, I want you to know that what that really is, is it breaks down into H2O and CO2. Okay, so if you see this, know that the products then further break down to H2O and CO2. All right, so milk of magnesia, which is an aqueous suspension of magnesium hydroxide, is also used as an antacid. So you get um, magnesium hydroxide plus 2 HCl. So again, we have a base and an acid. This is an acid-base neutralization reaction, hence why it neutralizes your stomach acid. Um, and then you get water and magnesium chloride, so that neutral ionic salt, which is more the more effective antacid per gram, sodium bicarbonate or magnesium hydroxide. So what we want to see is we want to see how much of this 
gets used up, right, if we react one gram of each of these starting amounts. So what we're going to do is it's going to be very similar to what we did up here, right, but we're going to have to kind of do it with both um, reactions to see which one um, with a starting amount of one gram actually um, neutralizes more of this HCl. All right, so we're going to take we're going to start with our first equation, and these are already balanced, so yay. Um, so we're going to start with our first equation. All right, we're going to start with one. Let's see, are they giving us per gram? So one. So we can just do 1.0 gram of, we'll start with NaH. CO3. And again, what we're doing is we're converting to grams of HCl to see how much of this gets used up with that one gram. All right, so the first thing that we need is we need a molar mass. So how many grams are in one mole of NaHCO3? So Na is 23, H is 1, C is 12, and then we have three oxygens at 16 each. And that gives us a molar mass of 84 grams times, and then we need our mole ratio here, which is one to one. Makes it a little easier. But I have to write out all of your steps, on, especially if you're trying to justify an answer on the AP exam, right? The AP writers wanna see all of your steps. Um, and then we need a molar mass of HCl. So we have one from H, 35.5 from chlorine. So that gives us 36.5 grams per mole. Okay, so we have one times 36.5. And then we're gonna divide that by 84. So that tells me that I'm gonna just go to Let's do three, just in case we need three sig figs to compare the two um, ending amounts. So 0 0.435 grams of HCl is neutralized per one gram of sodium bicarbonate. All right, let's check out our magnesium hydroxide now. So we have one gram times one mole. Um, and we need a molar mass, so we have 24.3 from our magnesium, and then we have two oxygens and two hydrogens, and that's a molar mass of 58.3 grams per mole, okay? And then we want our mole ratio, but this time, look, we have a two in front of our HCl, so two moles. HCl, will that make a big difference? We'll find out. One mole magnesium hydroxide. Okay, and the nice thing is, look at that, we already calculated our molar mass of HCl, so we'll just bring that guy down. One mole HCl. Might make a difference, let's see. So we have one times two times 36.5. And then we're going to divide by 58.3. And we get a 1.25 grams of HCl. So if you take a look, right, for one gram of this, we can neutralize 0.435 grams of HCl. For one gram of this, we can neutralize almost three times that amount of HCl. So the more effective antacid per gram in this case would be the one that can neutralize three times the amount, right? So then you would want to explain that, right? You want to write that out in words. Neutralizes 1.25 grams HCl versus 0 0.435 grams HCl. If you really want to impact, it gives some impact, so almost three times the amount, okay? So um, use your calculations and use your words 
right, to explain how your calculations justify your answer. It's important to, um, to do both. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this. I really want us getting used to um, particle representations of um, reactions because these particulate diagrams, as they're called, are um, something that are used a lot in AP as well. Okay, and they're not as confusing as, as you think they are. So let's take a look at what this problem is asking. Explain the particle views or sorry, examine the particle views and explain the differences between the two situations pictured below with reg regard to what is or is not reacting and total yield of ammonia. All right, so before the reaction, let's see. It looks like we have in this situation, right? So these guys here are our N2s. Let's label that N2. And these guys are our H2. And we just so happen to have enough moles of N2 and H2, right, for these to react in the perfect ratio. Because in order to produce, right, NH3, you need one N2 and three H2s. And so for every N2 and three H2s, you produce two particles or two molecules of ammonia, right? So here we had enough N2 and H2 just in the right ratio, right, to produce, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten moles of um, ammonia, right? So nothing left over, so we have no limiting or excess reagent in this case. So this is a this is a very efficient reaction. So we had enough N2 and H2 to produce just the right in just the right um, ratio of 10 moles of ammonia. Okay, so situation two. Let's see what's going on over here. So we had we started with we had five moles of N2, and we had let's see three six, nine moles of H2. So what we had was we had enough N2 and H2 to produce one, uh, two, four, six moles of NH3. But uh, what else do we see over here? We have some leftover N2. All right, so this is less efficient because we have some excess reagent. So that's called excess reagent. Just by looking at this, right? This isn't even like any real calculations. So this is excess um, N2, right? So we had, we were able to produce, um, dum, 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 six moles of NH3. And then we had leftover N2. So we had two moles of N2 leftover. And then we had a limiting reagent a reactant, um, which was our H2, right? So H2 ran out, right? And limited us to only six moles of NH3. So in this particle diagram, right? No limiting reagent. And we were able to produce 10 moles of NH3. Okay, so we had just the right starting amounts of N2 and H2 in the perfect ratio, perfect mole ratio, um, to produce 10 moles of NH3. So examine, explain the differences between the two situations with regard to what is or is not reacting and total yield of ammonia. So I think we did that pretty well. Okay. So in this case, in this first situation, you might even want to go as far as to say there's no limiting reagent, right? Both um, reagents fully reacted and were totally used up. Okay. So another example here, let's take a look. And we'll make this our last example that we do. And then maybe I will leave part E for you as a challenge problem. So nitrogen gas can be prepared. 
So let's think what this means. So nitrogen gas is prepared. So prepared for me would mean um, produced, right, product. By passing gaseous ammonia, NH3, over solid copper oxide, so Cu plus 2, oh, CuO solid. I was going with the hydroxide, but that's not what it says. At high temperatures. The other products of the reaction are solid copper and water vapor. All right. So NH3 gas and CuO, those would be our um, reactants. Okay. So we have NH3. So ammonia, right, tells us it's gaseous, but... Unless you're told otherwise, you can always assume that ammonia is gas, copper oxide, solid. And then our products are, we're told N2, gas. Um, the, night, the other products are solid copper. So if you have solid copper, that's just a CuS. And water vapor. So vapor tells us that that is also a gas. So if it, okay, so the first thing that we want to do, because we can tell we're going to be moving into stoichiometry here, we're given grams of both starting amounts. Um, what we want to do is we want to balance, okay? So on this side, we have two ends. So let's start with trying a two here. Okay, that balances that. Now that gives me six H's. So I want to come over here and try a three here. Okay, so that also gives me three O's. So if I put a three here and a three here, then I'm balanced, right? And I know I can write um, correct um, mole ratios now. All right, so it gives me a starting amount of NH3 and a starting amount of CuO. What is the limiting reactant? How many grams of N2 will be formed? Basic limiting reagent, limiting reactant problem. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna take both of those starting amounts and convert to grams of N2. Okay, so our three-step conversion with both of those starting amounts, we wanna start with our molar mass of NH3. And that is 14 plus 3, so that's 17 grams. Mole ratio, NH3 on the bottom, N2 on top. Right, so that's a 1 mole to 2 mole ratio. And then molar mass of N2, which is 28 grams per mole. Okay, so we're going to do that calculation. And that gives us in parentheses 18 point, ah, 18 point 1 times 28 divided by in parentheses 17 times 2. And that gives us so three sig figs would be 14.9 grams of N2. Now we want to do our second set of calculations and that this time we're starting with 90.4 grams of CuO. Um, seems like a lot, but copper oxide, right, is heavier. So don't think that you already know. So one mole of copper oxide and copper, 63.6 plus oxygen, with this, which is 16. So that is a molar mass of 79.6. So it's a lot heavier than ammonia gas. Okay, mole ratio, one mole N2. And then we have a um, coefficient of three in front of copper oxide. So three moles CuO. Okay, and then again, our molar mass of N2. And let's do those calculations. So we have 90.4 times 28 in parentheses divided by 79.6 times 3 in parentheses. 
and that gives us 10.6 grams of N2. All right, so based on these amounts, right, which one of these guys limits us to the least amount of product? It's copper oxide, so copper oxide is our limiting reagent. And how many grams of N2 will be formed? That's another way of asking for theoretical yield. So our theoretical yield is always tied back to our limiting reagent. And that's our theoretical yield, that 10.6 grams of N2. All right. So challenge problem for you guys to do on your own. And we will review, if necessary, the next time I see you guys will be this problem. Okay. So methanol is also called methyl alcohol, the simplest alcohol. It is used as a fuel in race cars and is a potential replacement for gasoline. Methanol can be manufactured by combination of gaseous carbon monoxide. Okay, manufactured, that's telling us we want this as a product. Gaseous carbon mon monoxide and hydrogen. Okay, so carbon monoxide and hydrogen will be your reactants in this case. So what you wanna do is you wanna write out, okay, write out your, um, Reaction of Cl plus H2 yields CH3OH. You want to balance it. And then you're going to use these starting amounts. Pay attention. You've got kilograms. Um, and convert both of those to grams of methanol. Okay. Figure out which is your limiting reagent. And then the amount that comes from the limiting reagent is your theoretical yield. And you're going to use that to calculate your percent yield. So those are your hints from me. Um, so I would like you to work on that on your own as your um, stoichiometry challenge problem. All right, thanks a lot. Let me know if you have any questions.